Hi, this is Brother Richard, and today we're continuing with our lesson series, Prototokus Mystery. This will be part 305. We're continuing with our lesson title, Waystation Earth. This will be part 3. Scripture teaches, The Father has a master plan for all the races of His creations. <clears throat> and we're going to take a look at uh, because of the shortness of time, just uh, a couple. <clears throat> Those that are predetermined, predestined by the Father in eternity. For those He predetermined sons who will function as the only begotten Son, He gives all. Turn to Romans 8, verse 30. Moreover, whom he did predestinate, them he also called. Whom he called, them he also justified. Whom he justified, them he also glorified. So it's referring to a specific group that the Father had dealings with before the foundation of the earth. Now, pertaining to this group, Scripture teaches... They belong to the Father in eternity, in, in temporality, in time. They incarnate into this life. When they incarnate in this life, the Father gives them over to the Son to develop so that they can qualify for what the Father has called them to do. Turn to the Gospel of John, 17th chapter. Verse six. I manifested my name unto the men which thou gavest me out of the world. Thine they were when in eternity. And thou gavest them me when? In temporality. And they have kept thy word. Now this principle the Lord repeats because he wants them to understand their eternal nature. The eternal state that they had. Look at verse 24, same chapter. <coughs> Father, I will that they also, whom thou hast given me, be with me where I am, that they may behold my glory. So he emphasizes the fact that they were the Lord's in eternity, the Father's in eternity, in temporality they come under the Son's <coughs> directive so that they can qualify for the fullness of sonship. Turn to Galatians, 4th chapter, verse 5. Actually, we're going to read verses 4 and 5. Galatians 4. But when the fullness of the time was come, God sent forth His Son, made of a woman, made under the law, 
to redeem them. Now you notice he refers to a group, them. This group shares a specific condition. To redeem them that were under the law. So, Jesus coming here serves two purposes. Redeeming those who were imprisoned under the law. Then he goes on that we, referring to another group, we might receive the adoption of sons. Who's the we he's referring to? The ones that God dealt with in eternity. We're looking at different groups that come under the Father's master plan. Now, Paul identifies with the second group. Not with the first group. Why? Because there were no prototokias when the first group existed. The prototokias did not incarnate until the generation of the Lord. Why? Because if they incarnated before the Lord completed his work on Calvary, they would be trapped forever under the law. They would be earthbound. Their destiny is not earth, their destiny is heaven. So they had to wait until at least the minimum of his generation to incarnate. That's why he talks about thine they were, but now they belong to me so that I can develop them to enable them to qualify for the eternal calling you placed upon them. Turn to Romans 8, verse 22 to 23. Romans 8, 22 to 23. <coughs> Looking at the adoption. <coughs> verse... Romans 8, 22 to 23. For we know that the whole creation groaneth and travaileth in pain together until now. The creation is in captivity and bondage under the death grip of the Luciferians. It's waiting to be delivered. Paul is stating this fact. And he goes on. And not only they, but ourselves. Ourselves also which have the first fruits of the Spirit. What is he saying here? He's putting a condition upon the group that he identifies with. Now, when I used to read this, I would automatically insert the word first, not first fruits, I would insert the word <coughs> earnest of the Spirit, meaning everybody that he has the earnest of the Spirit comes under this heading. The Holy Spirit corrected me right. very recently. It doesn't say earnest, it says first fruits. Yeah. Everybody that's in Christ has the earnest of the Spirit. Mm -hmm. But not everybody that's in Christ has the first fruits of the Spirit. Okay. We know the earnest of the Spirit comes as a, as a result of your becoming born again. Exactly. But they don't get the earnest of the spirit or the uh, fruits of the spirit on the born again experience or they do no you only get the first fruits as you mature okay the first fruits are the results of applying what you are given in the born again experience so the earnest leads you to manifesting the first fruits the only ones that are manifesting the first fruits or the Prototokis. Right. Well, you've answered my question. <coughs> because we see in verse 23 that the purpose of the first fruits is to bring about and prepare for the adoption. Yes. And only those can be yes. Prototokis. Those that are the first fruits, which Paul identifies with, we ourselves, grown within ourselves, waiting for the adoption mm. to wit the redemption of the Spirit. The first fruits mean the first stage of the glorification. Mm. 
it means those that are on the path, the path to the fullness of sonship if you have could, the first fruits of the Spirit. If you were able to define the first part of the process that you're referring to, what would you call that? To define... Yeah, you, 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 I've understood you to mean that the first fruits refers to the first part of the process of the adoption. Yes. What do you call that first part if you want to refer to it only as the first part? Well, the only way you, word you could use is first, first fruits. fruits. Okay. There's no, there's no other um, language you can use to convey the meaning of first fruits. No. No. He's talking about first fruits principle. Okay. But in other words, it's the beginning of your growth yes. in the spirit. Yes. Yes. First stage. Mm. Remember, the Lord of first fruits was. The first fruits were the first thing that would come up from the harvest. The first fruits always belonged to the Lord. God. Mm. When the harvest came up, then it was general uh, application. But only the first fruits were those things that God would select for Himself. So in Paul speaking about and Jesus speaking about they belonged to you in eternity. You gave them to me in time. Well, they're going to go back to the Father. He's developing the stages of glorification. Paul talks about from glory to glory. Yes. Yes. So the first fruits is the first stage leading to the fullness of sonship. What's the second stage? That's a progression. It may be X number of stages. Okay. But you're on the path that will lead to the fullness of sonship. Should we understand, therefore, that by the time of the first fruits, one would have seen, I'm talking about Ephesians 1, 15, that's what I'm thinking about, one would have received the spirit of wisdom and revelation, one would have received the spirit of prophecy, and the growth of that saint is such that you would say, They've reached this stage. Well, that's what leads you to the first fruits. Okay. Can't get there without, without the spirit. Right, that's the point I'm getting to. Without those things, I yeah. wouldn't be there. Okay. Now, everybody here has <clears throat> the earnest. That's like everybody's given the measure of faith. Sure. It's across the board, level playing field. We're not being exclusive here. What we're saying is only the prototokis is going to strive to achieve the first level. <clears throat> Everybody else who has the ability, but not the willingness, mm -hmm. will not accede to that degree. That's why Jesus <clears throat> separated the apostles from the disciples. Because they constituted a group that progressed toward the fullness of what they had been called to do. The disciples all walked away from Jesus, leaving just the apostles. That's the difference in commitment. Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice, and another they will not go to. It's the sheep that have the first fruits of the Spirit, that develop the first fruits of the Spirit. But let's go on. <clears throat> Hebrews, second chapter, verses 8 to 9. Praise the Lord. Hebrews, second chapter, verses 8 to 9. Okay. Thus put all things in subjection under his feet. For in that he put all in subjection under him, he left nothing that is not put under him. But now we see not yet all things put under him. He is qualifying for the fullness of sonship in which he enters into his inheritance, which is inheritance all things. Verse 9. But we see Jesus who was made a little lower than the angels for the suffering of death, crowned with glory and honor that he, by the grace of God, should taste death 
for every man, every man that will accept him will receive salvation. Prototokos, non-prototokos, whatever. Okay. So at the point where it's written, but now we see not yet all things put unto him, that's before his resurrection. That's what? That's before his resurrection. What I'm asking is, no, do we see all things? No, 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 that's referring to the prototokos. Oh, I'm sorry, I misunderstood that. So it's not the Lord. No, okay. it's a result of what the Lord did that I enabled the prototokos to I progress sure. toward that. Mm -hmm. I thought for sure you had that. No, I missed it. But now I do. Okay. Have it. Okay, verse 10. For it became him, Jesus, for whom are all things, and by whom are all things, in bringing many sons unto glory, to make the captain or author of their salvation perfect through sufferings. Protoclus have to come down here to suffer, to qualify. The Lord had to come down here to enable them to qualify for the sufferings that would lead to ultimately the glory. Yes. So back to verse 8. So should we understand then that the Protoclus priests, since they are elevated, if they're chosen, mm -hmm. at the end of the gathering, mm -hmm. have all things for unto them. Because it's, it's at that point that they have, that they possess all these goods. Yes, the only difference there is that they can't ascend into Eparanios because they haven't been glorified. Okay, so then... But they have the run of all the heavens of the creation. So, the question is, is it at the end of the gathering for the teachers, or is it at the second coming with the Eparanios part? No. The, uh, the, all, the, things the, the, all things bequeathed to them at the rapture. Okay. The Glorification. Rapture. That's the point. Okay. Prior to that, they have the run of the creation. Right. Because he says, I will <coughs> basically put him in charge of all my Goods. holdings. Yes. Now, what we find, the two principles here again is repeated. Remember what we read in Galatians. That he came to redeem those that were under the law and to enable those who have been brought forth to progress toward the adoption. He repeats the same thing here. He says, Verse 9, we see Jesus who was made a little lower than the angels for the suffering of death, crowned with glory and honor, that he by the grace of God should taste death for every man. That is all inclusive. Those that are under bondage now are free because Jesus tasted death for them. And he goes on to the second group. For it became him for whom are all things by whom are all things in bringing many sons unto glory. This is the second group, Prototokos. So it's a two-fold purpose, to free the human race and to enable the Prototokos to progress to what the Father has called them to qualify for. <clears throat> now, What we find Scripture teaches <clears throat> all who are born into the Adamic race <clears throat> have an opportunity to receive a place of authority in the Father's kingdom. So whether you are prototokus or non prototokus if you are born into the human race you have an opportunity <coughs> to qualify for a position of authority in God's kingdom if you so choose. Turn to Galatians, the third chapter, verse 27 to 28. What is this saying? As you're turning.
in Galatians 4, as you're turning, I'm just going to read this scripture to you. Verse 5, to redeem them which were under the law. <clears throat> what happens when they get redeemed? They now have the opportunity to qualify <clears throat> for a position in God's kingdom. The prototokos already have their calling from eternity. They're progressing toward the fullness of glorification. You have two groups. Those that have <clears throat> been called before the foundation of the world, those who are freed after the foundation of the world. Both are here incarnate in the human race. Both have to find their place and pursue the path that God has ordained for them to walk so that they can qualify for what they've been called to do. In Galatians, the third chapter, verse 27 to 28, we read, For as many of you as have been baptized into Christ, have put on Christ. What does this mean? He's not talking about water baptism. He's talking about immersion into the body of Christ. You lose your humanity. You lose your human characteristic. Whether you're prototokos or whether you're non prototokos You leave the human order. As many of you as have been put, baptized into Christ have put on Christ. There is neither Jew nor Greek there's neither bond nor free. There's neither male nor female. You're all one in Christ Jesus. <clears throat> Everybody in Christ loses their human identity. Turn to 2 Corinthians 5th chapter. Verse 17. <clears throat> Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things are passed away. What old things passed away? The Adamic order. He's no longer part of the human race if he's in Christ. He's neither male nor female. He's neither bond nor free. God doesn't see him as a human any longer. He sees him as a son. Whether he's prototokos or non prototokos It's a new creation. All things have passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Turn to Genesis, first chapter. <clears throat> I can't emphasize this enough. I said the Father has a master plan for all groups in the human race. Genesis, the first chapter. Verse 28. <clears throat> God bless them. Who? The Adamic race that he just created. And God said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply. <clears throat> Replenish the earth. Subdue it. Have dominion over the fish of the sea over the fowl of the air, over everything, every living thing that moveth upon the earth. That was man's marching orders, the human race. Turn to Colossians, the third chapter. Verses 1 and 2. He 
If you then be risen with Christ, be baptized into Christ, risen, you are now a new creation. If you be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, but Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth. What about the prime directive? Replenish the earth and subdue it. Take dominion over it. In Christ that is neutralized. You are no longer, it's passed away. You no longer identify with that. You identify with what's being said here. If you're in Christ, you are now connected to the heavens, no longer to the earth. He says, don't concern yourself with the things of earth anymore. That directive is no longer applicable to you because you are no longer who you were before. You're a new creation designed for life in the heavens. And the Father expects us to progress in that respect. What does that mean? That means that organized religion does a disservice to the name of Jesus Christ because they teach consistently to remain connected to the things of earth. They teach how to be successful, how to pursue the things of earth. You can be successful in your family, be successful in your businesses, be successful in applying and growing and the things that you're accumulating in your comfort zone on earth. Totally contrary to Colossians, the third chapter. They should be teaching, forget the things of earth, prepare yourself for the things of heaven, because that's what you've been designed for, to function in the heavens. Whether you're prototokias or whether you are a, a called in time, you are no longer to remain connected to the earth. You no longer to identify with the things of earth. You now identify with the things of the heavens. Because you're qualifying for a position in the kingdom of the heavens. Not taught. Let's yes, go on. It's mm. Not right here. <laughs> Let's go on. Scripture teaches, if they forsake the corrupted Adamic pursuits of this Luciferian world system and pursue the path of the kingdom, they shall receive a rulership position in it. Matthew 6, chapter, verse 31 to 33. Matthew 6, 31 to 33. Therefore take no thought, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink? Or withal shall we be clothed? In other words, what is he saying here? He's saying that most people spend their time in their life pursuing their careers, pursuing a place in the earth matrix scheme of things. Every single day, is a focus on trying to achieve something in the here and the now, which totally consumes their entire life. They can't get off the earth. Why? Because they're programmed to remain connected to the earth from a human perspective. Jesus is saying, if you're in me, that's neutralized, that's nullified. Why? Because the Father mandates it. He goes on. For after all these things do the Gentiles seek. What does that mean? Unsaved people have this mindset. Those in Christ should not have it. Whether you're prototokus or non-prototokus. For your heavenly Father knoweth that you have need of all these things. But seek ye first, seek ye first, seek ye first the kingdom of God. And his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. What does this mean? This means that God has placed upon us a calling. 
That calling is going to be the source in which we receive our needs. He's going to work through our calling to provide for us. <clears throat> Jesus never had to give up his ministry to go get a job as a carpenter again so that he could supply the needs for him and the disciples. Once he was called, he laid it all down and he lived off of his ministry. What God had called him to do. To give you a case in point, turn to Jeremiah first chapter. Jeremiah first chapter. Verses 4 to 5. We read this in the previous lesson. Then the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, What is the word of the word is the Logos? This is Jesus Christ talking to Jeremiah. Pre-incarnate Jesus Christ. Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. Jeremiah is not prototokos. Jeremiah is Adamic. But he still had a relationship with Elohim. Why? You read about it in Genesis, the first chapter. He came down, he created, and he stayed with his creation. He ministered to them, blessed them, and gave them a job to do. And he's telling to Jeremiah here, before I formed thee in the belly, in other words, from the time that we ministered, I ministered to you in the spiritual realm. Now you're in the physical realm. Well, that time you were in the spiritual realm, we had a relationship. Now we have another relationship in the physical. Before I formed you in the belly, I knew you. And before you came as forth out of the womb, I sanctified you. I ordained you a prophet unto the nations. <coughs> Notice he doesn't say, well, uh, you're going to be a part-time prophet. Because you got to support yourself by a job. So, Mondays and Fridays, you prophesy to the nations. Uh, Saturdays, Sundays, you you got to work over here at, at uh, this desk job to meet your needs. Get your paycheck. And then after that, the, 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 the Saturday you get paid, then you go back to being a prophet. No. He's going to live from his ministry. You be a committed prophet, and I will meet all your needs, Jeremiah. And so it is us. The problem that most Christians have is they never find what their calling is. So if you never find what they're calling, they can't live from the work that they've been called to do, so they're perpetually dependent upon the world to provide for them. That's not God's will. If he separates us from the human race, we are not to be dependent upon the human race or the things of earth to meet our needs. We are to progress in the path that God has ordained for us to progress in. Okay, let's go on. Having established that, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. All these things shall be added unto you. Never stop pursuing the kingdom. Never look back at where you came from. Look forward to where you're going. And where you're going, your feet are going to be firmly planted in the kingdom. Because the kingdom is your destiny. The kingdom is eternal. Everything else is temporal. It's going to pass away. But you're never going to pass out of your position in the kingdom. Turn to Daniel, the seventh chapter. Verse 27. We're talking about the groups. That God has, the Father has a master plan for. 
We talked briefly about the prototokias. We are now talking about the other groups coming out of the human race. Yes. Does the Father <coughs> decide what groups we are put in, or do we decide what groups we put in by our lives? Father, from eternity. Father's parceled out everything <coughs> according to his master plan. Everyone falls under a group. And those that commit automatically are drawn to that group. Because that's their eternal family. Now, Daniel 7, chapter 27. And the kingdom and dominion and the greatness of the kingdom. Seek ye first the kingdom. Under the whole heaven shall be given to the people of the saints of the Most High. Now, I'm going to repeat this. The kingdom and dominion and the greatness of the kingdom under the whole heaven. So it's given a position. What does that mean? The kingdom and dominion and the greatness of the kingdom under the whole heaven. The word whole there comes from a Hebrew term kol, which means all. It means entire. Heaven, Shemayim. What's it referring to? It's referring to the secondary heavens which lie under the primary heavens. All that, the secondary heavens, are given to the people of the saints of the Most High. Kingdom and dominion and the greatness of the kingdom under the whole heaven shall be given to the people of the saints of the Most High. Who are the people of the saints of the Most High? Those that come under, out of the human race, come under the dominion of the Prototokos. Prototokos are the saints of the Most High. So the people of the human race that commit to a position in the kingdom will come under their authority. Is the Lamb part of the people of the Most High? Is the, is the Lamb mm -hmm. part of the people? Mm -hmm. No. The Lamb is over all. No, not Elohim, Jesus Christ, the Lamb. I'm not talking about Oh, 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 lamb. you're talking about, yeah. Oh, that, yeah. Yes. that Lamb. That yes, lamb. Right. yes, okay. that Lamb. Yes. Yeah, I breathe the sigh of relief, too. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> okay. The kingdom and dominion and the greatness of the kingdom under the whole heaven shall be given to the people of the saints of the Most High, whose, whose kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and all dominions shall serve and obey Him. So, we find what's going to happen. The people that you disciple fall under this group. they become your people. And who are these people going to be? The people that you touch in this life who have a calling in this life. In other words, they hear the gospel in this life, they commit in this life, they progress toward a position in the kingdom in this life. They're come, going to come under the sons of God. Why? Because the sons of God inherit all things. Yes. Yes, yeah, so you know, see, the people of the saints of the Most High are going to inherit a heavenly kingdom. Yes. Okay. In the lower heavens. Yes. yes. And the, the the saints of the Most High, they get a kingdom too. Yes. In heaven. Yes. Um, heaven of heavens or, be, or under? All. Ooh. All. <laughs> You're going to Sorry. inherit all things. So the okay. heaven, so the heaven which the the uh, the people get, is part of the all things, of course. Yeah. Now, since you said people you disciple, obviously you're not including the elder student. No, because they're prototokis. Mm. They wouldn't be considered the people of the saints. No, I wouldn't think so too. So, if we have time to disciple anybody outside of our roster of elder students. Anybody you disciple, you make an eternal connection with. Mm. It never stops, never ends. Unless because they you off. become connected. They, they are connected to you because you are the one 
that is going to install within them all that they need to comprehend about the kingdom. Unless they choose to cut it off. Yes. Right. So, okay. let's say that you've been deciphering somebody who fits into the... Um, it's, the it's the fan. Oh. Who fit into the uh, people of the saints category. Mm -hmm. That person decides to cut it off after several years. Mm -hmm. What happens to that relationship in the spiritual realm? Does it it's continue? cut off. It's completely separated. Sure. What, 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 who do they transfer to? Who do they transfer to? Mm. Well, they decide to cut it, cut it off? Yeah. The Luciferians. Okay. okay. You, you assume if they... Okay. Well, no, no assumption. They're going to get connected to the Luciferians if they walk away from you. What happens if they cut off that relationship but they stay in the Lord? You can't. You can't. Because it's not you that made the connection. It's God. Hmm. You've been assigned to disciple them, prepare them for the destiny that they've been called to. They shut it down. They can't substitute. They say, well, I'm going to still serve the Lord. They're going to fall, 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 and they're on, and it's immediately into a, a reality, a pseudo-reality. So essentially they've entered into a covenant with the Protodicus teacher. Mm -hmm. which if they walk away from it any given period of time they essentially move more and more towards the Luciferian bondage. They forfeit bondage. their connection oh. to Christ. And there is no repenting from that, is there? Yeah, they can repent. They can come back. Oh, Thank God. As long as it's in the period of grace. But if you're out here in the tribulation period uh, and there's still going to be a connection. You're going to be in heaven, they're going to be on earth, but it's still a connection. Okay, that's the point I'm getting to. There's yeah. still a connection. You fall away from that, you you're toast. Because the only option that you have is a Luciferian influence. Mm. There is no second option. So they just become part of the remnant on the earth? Yeah, they become part of the torment regions of eternity. They're going to be destroyed. Remember what we read in, in John the 15th chapter, if a man abide not in me, right. he is cast forth as a branch, and men gather them and burn them in the fire. But he may go through a period of the tribulation and repent and become a martyr. No. Why? No. Because <clears throat> he severed his connection. Mm -hmm. Those that repent do so at the beginning of the tribulation period. Okay. There ain't no suddenly right. changing your mind because the Luciferian influence is too it's great. Too great. Okay. Yes. You you can't you can't get out from underneath that. Mm -hmm. You have a comment? No. Okay. Let's go on. Yeah, that lamb. Not that, <laughs> that lamb. That lamb. Okay. <laughs> when you said the lamb, you know, the first thing I think about is the Lord. <laughs> I, I I looked at I, I was enjoying the look on your face. We don't see that too much. But that's all right. She <laughs> saw the frightful look on my face. <laughs> stand firm, stand steady, brothers. <laughs> Let's continue. Scripture teaches the Lord and his prototokist brethren will assign rulership positions to these saints. We look at the Lord. Book 19, verses 16 to 17. Then came the first, saying, Lord, thy pound hath gained ten pounds. And he said unto him, Well, thou good servant, because thou hast been faithful in a very little, have authority over ten cities. Verse 18, The second came, saying, Lord, thy pound hath gained five pounds. And he said uh, likewise unto him, Be thou over five pounds. City. So this is rulership in the kingdom. Yeah. The Lamb, the people of the saints of the Most High are not going to be priests, they're going to be rulers. 
would you describe all the people, the saints of the Most High, as the Lamb? Or just some of them as the Lamb? Because they'll have various varying levels of commitment, understanding, willingness to, to learn. If they miss the rapture, they're going to be the Lamb. Okay. That's it. No, no discussion. No. All right. Yeah. Uh, what you're going to have, though, they're going to be in this run, in this line. You're going to have others who are prototokis that missed the rapture, mm. who have the spirit within them. They repent in the tribulation period. They're martyred and they come up to the heaven of heavens. These don't. So there's no prototokis who misses the rapture and is tardy in the repenting, meaning they all repent at that early stage of the tribulation. Yeah, you're going to have different phases of the tribulation in which prototokis are going to be caught up. Okay, what would be the latest group of the prototokis in the tribulation that go up? Those that, those well, that don't take the mark. So it's far into the beat. Okay, that's interesting. All right. mm -hmm. And therefore we understand that the female aspects of the spirit in the wilderness regions is while she's being nourished she's still connected to them and that's the only reason that they're able to get through to that far isn't it sure that's why she stays where she yeah. is mm -hmm. remember revelation 12 chapter the satan goes after the woman <coughs> and then he goes after her seed the remnant of her seed they keep the commandments of god these are the ones that are going to go up during the tribulation period, ending part of the tribulation period. You're going to have some on a, on a sea of glass. You're going to have some that come out of great tribulation. They're all going to be priests. There's no rulers there. The rulers come from those who are considered the people of the saints. The prototokis are not people of the saints. They're the brothers of the saints of the Most High. Because they are of the Most High. They just missed the rapture. If there are priests, Protodicus priests, who missed the rapture, and that goes out as far out as the beast not taking his mark, is the implication that elders are not also going through tribulation to that extent because they don't have the same fortitude? Spiritual fortitude. Uh, what what stops an elder from being able to have the Holy Spirit in him? He's still a protocus, the Holy Spirit in him, mm -hmm. and being able to be the seed of the remnant, of oh, the, the remnant of her seed, excuse me, on the earth, out as far as nothing. So why don't nothing. we see that? We do. But you just said they're all priests. They are. So where are the? I believe because in that respect, since they repent. Mm -hmm. They become priests. Elders become priests. Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. Okay, well hang on a second. Yeah. You have to explain that a little bit. You can't just say that and then, okay, let's move on. Let's move on. <laughs> well, look at it this way. The Father moves sovereignly. Okay. The Father wants priests. He doesn't want kings. Just like even YHVH didn't want kings. He wanted priests. Yes, yes. okay. By them doing what they do, repenting, they qualify okay. now for the priesthood. Very interesting. Wow. We have to wrestle that out of you, don't we? Interesting. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's braces for So, that now makes sense because, as you've taught us, the further you go into the higher intensity of the tribulation, the higher level of heavens. And since they're now priests, they qualify to be priests, Clearly, they'll be in the in heavens. higher, heavens. yes. Right. Okay. Yes. That makes sense. Thank you. My pleasure. Let's go on. So the Lord is showing us He is going to distribute to the the people of the saints the positions in the kingdom. Matthew twenty-five, verse twenty to twenty-one. Same principle. Matthew 
And so he that had received five talents came and brought other five talents, saying, Lord, thou deliverest unto me five talents. Behold, I have gained beside them five talents more. His Lord said unto him, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things that will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. He also that received two talents came and said, Lord, thou deliverest unto me two talents. Behold, I have gained two other talents beside them. His Lord said unto him, Well done, good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. So the people of the saints become rulers in the kingdom. The prototokos, elders, if they miss, left behind, if they are not lost, and they repent, they become priests. Why? Because in the primary creation, you don't need kings. Right. You need teachers. Yes. And that's what they become. Yes. The teacher, the kings, the elders, are not going to be ruling in the heavens, per se, um, where the teachers are going to be basically concentrated. Mm -hmm. They're going to be in the Luciferian former corrupted areas bringing things into the authority of God so that <clears throat> if they're open if they've been broken now they can be taught but they're the nations remember the word nations you never see the word nation attributed to the heavens mm -hmm. it's always attributed to the physical lower regions Satan was cast out to earth from the lower nations. I made the nations to shake right. at the sound of his fall when I cast them down to hell. So the nations would be commensurate with the planetary systems mm -hmm. of this universe, which go beyond, astronomically, beyond what you can comprehend. Sure. But those are the nations. That's the region that the elders are going to be operating and bringing that into authority of the Father. So the many mansions are the abodes of the nations only. They don't refer to anything else of it. Yes. Okay. Now, Revelation 20, verse 4. Be closing with this. And I saw thrones, and they sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. So Prototokos. They are, as the Lord is, distributing positions in the kingdom to those that constitute or have been brought into a point where they qualify for them. They're doing the same thing the Lord is doing. Daniel 7. People of the saints being given authority in the kingdom. Revelation 3, verse 21. <laughs> to him that overcometh will I grant to sit with me in my throne. Even as I also overcame and am sat down with my father in his throne. So here you have the Lord and the brethren seated on thrones, distributing authority.
to those that qualify.